praise Lord church. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Miss you guys. Um, I'm going to be reading here a Psalms. Psalms 31 and the NLT is a great psalm of strength and encouragement. And especially in these times that we're going through right now, church. We're in this together. Oh Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me. Rescue me quickly. Be my rock of protection. A fortress where I will be safe. You are my rock, hallelujah, and my fortress. For honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. Pull me from the trap my enemy set for me. For I find protection in you alone, and I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me, Lord, for you are a faithful God. God bless you guys. I hope that blesses you. Amen.
Church. A couple announcements here. First one is that we will start having our services again this Sunday in person. Once again, we will start having our Sunday services this Sunday, August 2nd, and they will be in person. So just watch the Facebook page, Instagram for the time that we will have it, but we will be having in-person services again. You can continue giving your tithes and offerings to www.thepgja.org. And for prayer requests, we ask that you continue praying for Pastor and Sister Zeke during this time as they're recovering, just asking God to keep them safe and uh, strengthen them. We also ask you to pray for all the souls and lost souls. We ask you to pray for Johnstown and Indiana areas and also the surrounding areas. And we also ask you to pray for the leaders of our state and of this nation during this time. And wherever you are right now, I ask you to please uh, pray with me and uh, take these needs up. Lord God, I give you the glory, the honor, Jesus. I praise your name, God, for you are a great king. Our Father, Lord, our healer and our provider, Jesus. I ask you to please continue blessing Sister and Pastor Zeke, Lord God, as they recover, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I pray that you just touch the areas of Johnstown and Indiana and all the surrounding areas, Lord God. Lord God, let the doors open for your spirit and your anointing to move throughout these areas, God. Jesus, I ask you to please pray for our church, Lord God. Heal each soul, each mind, Lord God. Each body, strengthen them, Lord God. Let the revival in these cities and our church, Lord God, happen, Jesus. I pray that you touch the leaders of these nations, of this state, Lord God. I ask you to please heal them, Lord God. Let whatever they choose to do, Lord God, let it be blessed by you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I ask you to please continue watching over us in this time and there that we are, Lord God. Because you are the only thing that can save us, the one that can heal us, the one that can bless us, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Church, welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Pastor and Sister Zeke for allowing me to come on and uh, teach like this. It's always a great privilege to come before you all um, and teach or preach or bring the Word of God, whatever this is. And um, I'm I'm privileged, and I th I'm thankful that you would allow me in your home and. Uh, that you would listen to what I have to say. It's a great honor to uh, to teach to you, and, and uh, it's I don't it's something that I don't take lightly. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to start off this lesson with prayer uh, first and foremost for Pastor and Sister Zeke. Um, they're still sick at home, so if you um, we're going to pray for them in just a moment, but if you have a moment, maybe just pause this video and text them and message them and let them know that you're thinking about them. Um, just keep them in your prayers. Uh, it's, it's a lot on them to, um, to not be with you all and not be able to come to church or, um, it's, I can't imagine, uh, what's on their heart, uh, and I know they love you all very much, and um, we need to continue to pray for them. Uh, pray for all of those who are sick. I know that we all know somebody that, that may be sick um, with the virus or uh, just some other ailment that they may have. Uh, again, if you know somebody, pause the video and uh, reach out to them. Be the body of Christ and pray with them over the phone, because I know that um, I, I heard Brother Lee Stone King say, prayer goes anywhere uh, God is. And I know that God is everywhere, and prayer can do anything that God can do. So that's, that's the awesome thing about our prayers. Um, so use that. Use that to the best of our ability, and let's pray for each other. Uh, pray for our sicknesses. Pray for the brokenhearted. Pray for the lost and confused people of our um, congregation of our cities, uh, our next door neighbors, pause the video and go to your next door neighbor, knock on their door, stay six feet away and tell them that you love them. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Um, and uh, pray for the youth and the children. I know that as the youth pastor, we have seen these youth grow in many different ways. But with this uh, quarantine and the, the lack of actually being in church, uh, it's very easy to kind of either stagnate or stay in the same place or go backwards. And I want us to pray for our children, pray for our youth, because they may not know and they may not know how to uh, call on the name of the Lord. They might not know how to uh, create that, um, that stable relationship with Jesus. Um, and we need to pray for them and pause the video and encourage them. Talk to your children about Jesus. If you have a youth in your home, hug their neck and tell them that you love them. Tell them that 
Jesus loves them. And I know um, if I was sitting in my living room right now, I, I kind of chuckle and look over to my girls and, and, and kind of half-heartedly uh, maybe hug them and, and joke around a little bit. But even in those half-hearted light moments, uh, you can show your children that you love them. And this walk that we have with Jesus isn't a, a rigid um, military walk. It's, it's a walk with a father. Um, and yes, sometimes he calls us into action. And uh, I guess in a way we are in the Lord's army, but um, let's show them love and let's show them compassion and let's show uh, each other compassion and let let God's virtue f flow through you um, I want to thank uh, everybody uh, and I want to thank pastor yeah I want to thank brother James uh, for the message that he preached on Sunday and um, I'm kind of gonna piggyback on that but without without going further into it let's let's pray Lord Jesus I ask you to come into this room right now. As I'm sitting in my kitchen, Lord Jesus, I'm, I'm really concerned for our church. And I want you, Lord Jesus, to touch the broken heart, to touch the sick and the confused, oh Lord Jesus. Let your anointing power be in every home. Let your presence, oh Lord Jesus, be with us. Give us wisdom, understanding, discretion, Lord God, so that we can make the right decisions in the right moments, Lord God, that we can be more like you, and as we become more like you, we can be, uh, we can love each other more, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, again, I'm going to read in the New Living Translation, only because I think that it, uh, it's easier to read, uh, it's easier to understand. Um, I love the King James Version. It's very poetic, and um, but there's a lot of these and thous, and I know if you have a kid um, watching the video right now, uh, they, they, they're going to go to sleep if I start talking like that. So um, <clears throat> get them something to, to draw on and uh, keep them interested in the video somehow. Um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 3, uh, Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord the God of your ancestors promised you. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road and when, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Now, just first glance at that, you know, it takes a lot of consistency to do that every day. God Almighty is saying, I want you to do these things um, wholeheartedly. Repeat them again and again to your children. So as a parent, it's my responsibility. It's our responsibility to talk to our children, not just once or twice a week about this, but daily about Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Talk about them when you're at home. 
in your living room right now. Or nowadays, modern days, when you're in the car. Or um, when you're around your kitchen table. Or sitting on your living room sofa. Or um, wherever you might be with your, with your family. When you're at home. And when you're on the road, I guess I should have read that. When you're going to bed, say these things. It's, it's not just for the open parts of our home, but the intimate spaces of our home. And when you are getting up, when you wake up in the morning, you should say, Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. all the time they need to say this. And then not only that, he wanted them to tie it to their hands and wear it on your forehead as reminders. So it's not just a verbal thing that they were saying. It was a physical reminder. Write them on your doorposts. So when you're walking into your house, it's a reminder, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And write them on your gates. What's more visible than a fence outside of your house? Sometimes, yes, it can be the very inside the very intimate chambers of our house, our bedrooms, or our living rooms. And sometimes it's okay to, to just, you know, do this with our family. But it's, it's saying, go a little bit further out from that. Go to your doorposts. Yeah, it's going to be a reminder to you as you walk in. But then he says, put it on your gates even further outside of your house, so that anybody that walks by, any of your neighbors that walk by, will see here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's a lot. And do that every day. Every day. Make sure that you're remembering it and repeating it constantly, every day. Okay, so why, why is this? Why, why would it matter if you do this every day? Okay, so um, I was talking to the youth the other day about consistency. Um, we, we have mountain times and we have valley times, right? You have good times and you have bad times. You have victories and you have the depths of despair. And I read recently that when you are on the mountaintop, when you're having your victories, those borders and those um, commitments and those morals and um, the holiness standards that you have put in place for your home, the stuff that you watch, the, the people you hang out with, all of those things, when you're in a victory state, it's very easy to look at that boundary and say, you know what, I can do that. You know, Deuteronomy 6.4 says, the Lord our God is one Lord. He is the Almighty God. That's, that's easy to, to remember. Now, but the problem is, is, Life doesn't stay on the high notes. It always tends to, to go downhill sometimes. And uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, so we're going to be in that valley sometimes. He's going to be with us, but do we acknowledge that he's there? That's another question. But in those valley times, we get really close to our boundaries, really close to our morals and our holiness standards and the people that we might not 
we we might not uh, want to talk to in certain times because you know it seems like in those moments where uh, we're at our lowest, it seems like the people that talk and um, gossip or talk bad about people or um, uh, that movie might pop up on online or a, you're, you're scrolling through your Facebook or Instagram feed and that one thing, that, that temptation comes up or, um, you know, it's very easy in those low moments to say, you know what, it's, why do I do this? Why do, why do I even bother? Why do I, you know what, one time's not going to hurt. It, it doesn't matter that much. And then I've been there. You do that one thing, and then all of a sudden guilt sets in and condemnation sets in. And oh my goodness, I should have never done that sets in. And it's and sometimes it's repairable, but sometimes it's a fence that's gonna be mended but broken for the rest of your life. So that's why consistency is so very important. That's why. God was asking the Israelites to repeat this and keep it in front of their face every day for, for their entire life. Because they knew eventually they were going to come against a hard place. And in that place, they were going to have to remember who their God was. Their children and the generations that came after them are going to look at the Jordan River and say, what are those stones for? And if you look at the scripture, the parents' response is supposed to be, we put those there in remembrance of our boundaries. I read another thing recently that we need to, we need to make those boundaries serious. In America, it's very easy to uh, not have a lot of, of issues. I mean, I'm not going hungry. Um, we, we live in a nice home. Um, and even, even people in poverty in the United States of America live better than people in other nations that do not have food or running water. It's, it's very easy to not, uh, it's very easy to not, not consider God. It's very easy not to consider his promises because of our stature and maybe we don't need him. But that's another reason why, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, that consistency. So even in the good times and even in the bad times, he is in the forefront of our minds. Now there are some promises that went along with uh, this promise. The promises would be, God will bring you into the land that is prosperous, the land that is flowing with milk and honey. He's going to give you houses that are richly stocked with goods that you didn't produce. He's going to draw water. You're going to be able to draw water from wells that you did not dig. You're going to eat food from fields you did not plant. And you're going to drive out those wicked nations. But there was that requirement. Don't forget the Lord that brought you out of slavery. Where? Where from? The land of Egypt. The land uh, where there were gods other than the one true God. The second requirement, fear the Lord and serve him. And don't worship any of the neighboring nation's gods. Why? Why is that? Why were these requirements necessary? Because he is a jealous God. And I know that 
God has not changed from the beginning of time till now. And it, it okay, so I want you to do a, a Bible study, right? If he has not changed, what are his requirements for us today? What were the laws about um, sexual sin or uh, loving your neighbor as yourself or uh, thou shalt not lie or steal? What, what were those things? What were those character traits of God in uh, the Old Testament? And how do they mesh up with what Jesus said in the New Testament? Jesus said um, in Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and all your mind. Matthew 22, 37, I should say. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second, a second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So that's, that's your homework. He is a jealous God. He wants you to love him with all your heart, soul, mind. Again, how do you do that? How do you love him in such a profound way? It applies to us today. You put it in your bedroom. You put it in your home. You put it on your doorpost. You put it on your fence. You show the love of Christ and his commandments in everything that you do because he did not change. He has never changed. He still is a jealous God. And what were the consequences that um, the Israelites would have faced? His anger will flare up against you. He will wipe you from the face of the earth. In Hosea chapter 11, this might be a little bit long, but I'm going to read it. Hosea chapter 11, verse 1. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. This is God talking. But the more I called to him, the farther he moved from me, offering sacrifices to the images of Baal and burning incense to idols. I myself taught Israel how to walk, leading him along by the hand. But he doesn't know or even care that it was I who took care of him. I led Israel along with my ropes of kindness and love. I lifted the, the yoke from his neck, and I, I and I myself stooped to feed him. But since my people refuse to return to me, they will return to Egypt and will be forced to serve Assyria. War will swirl through their cities. Their enemies will crash through their gates. They will destroy them, trapping them in their own evil plans. For my people are determined to desert me. They call me the Most High, but they don't truly honor me. What happened? And what's the connection, Paul? What are you trying to get at? Please tell me. I hope you're asking those questions. I believe that they forgot Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They forgot their first love. Don't forget your first love. Hosea chapter 11, verse 8. 
Oh, how I how can I give you up, Israel? How can I let you go? How can I destroy you like Adma or demolish you like Zeboim? My heart is torn within me and my compassion overflows. No, I will not unleash my fierce anger. I will not completely destroy Israel, for I am God and not a mere mortal. I am the Holy One living among you, and I will not come to destroy, for some day the people will follow me. I, the Lord, will roar like a lion, and when I roar, my people will return trembling from the west, like a flock of birds, they will come from Egypt, trembling like doves. They will return from Assyria, and I will bring them home again, says the Lord. He loved them so much that even though the law demands punishment, he still provided a way back. In Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 7, Paul is speaking here. He says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness the, through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling who? He's calling us. The Apostle Paul, who wrote so much of the New Testament, is saying that he is not perfect. But he is pressing and pushing, and he puts it in his heart, he puts it in his mind, he puts it in his home, he told it to the children, he told it to the youth, he told it to his family, he told it to those that despised him, even though he was broken and bruised and went through torments and trials, he pressed and he pushed. In the high times and the low times, he went past everything that was gained to him and counted it as, as lost. For Christ Jesus, so much so that he says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. 
Of course we want to feel that. Of course we want to raise with him when he blows the trumpet. But he did not just say that because many of us might not go by way of the trumpet. We might go by the way of death. So he says, I want to suffer with him. Sharing in his death, the death of the cross. The scripture says, I die daily. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that we actually die daily. But that means that every day for the rest of our lives, we tell our children. We put it in our homes. We put it in our hearts. Because I do not want to be counted as a castaway. I do not want to miss out on the blessings that Jesus Christ has bestowed on his church. And I want my friends and my loved ones, my co-workers, I want you who are watching this to feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I want his wisdom and his grace and his mercies to flow upon your life. I want him to touch you and minister to you for his name's sake, for his glory, so that not only is his church saved, but those that we know. So what does that mean? Jesus, help us to understand that you are the only Lord. You are the only Redeemer. You are the only one that can save us from our sins. God, do not let me be haughty. Don't let me have a rebellious spirit. Don't let us gossip against one another. Let us praise each other as we praise you and your name. Help us to love you in our homes. Help us to lift of holy hands without wrath or doubting. Let us speak your names in our living rooms, in our bedrooms, in our closets, but not just in our homes, but next to our doorposts and next to our fences, by the roads and the highways and the byways. Help us to compel people who are on the way and the path to everlasting darkness. Help us to call them and compel them to come and dine. I'm reminded of a song. I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you've asked of me, I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, help me remember Calvary's cross. And be willing to say yes. I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you've asked of me, I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, help me remember Calvary's cross.
be willing to say yeah. I love you Jesus thank you for your grace and your mercy and God be with us help us and give us wisdom through these times for I know you are rising raising up a generation that knows who you are who can call on your name is bold and knows miracles signs and wonders for the purpose of the furtherance of your kingdom help me to be part of that number be blessed in Jesus name for there is victory that comes when we know him and we are his servants. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.